Hello there guys, my name is Mint, welcome to episode 2 of my Minecraft cinematic tutorial uh, where we learn the ropes of Minecraft cinematic creation and um, all the basics to it. In the last episode we covered the uh, filming, the software and the mods and in this episode we are going to be covering the editing, uh, the actual making and compiling of the footage that we have gained. Now. If you haven't watched the first episode, I would strongly recommend you go watch that, unless you have knowledge on how to record. Um, so what I've done is I've gone off and I've recorded all these separate clips because um, I sort of like to do it in my own thing. And it might be a bit laggy when I play these because it's with VLC and it doesn't actually play very well. But um, we have these... Oh, it's a bit buggy off, off um, with unloaded textures. But anyway... Um, don't worry about the frames per second it was recording at a solid uh, 30 frames it's just because of the recording at the moment and the VLC playback so I've got some nice sort of panoramic cinematic shots of a pumpkin and uh, we've got that one out of that cave that we had before and also I think one ca yeah one coming behind a tree um, just remember that this isn't lagging uh, okay, so since we've got all of these, um, how many of these here? Seven clips. Uh, seven clips we're going to be working with in creating our cinematic. If I need more, I will go get more, but, you know, we, we, we'll, I'm sure we'll be able to fit these in perfectly fine just at the meantime. So what I've done is I've also gone off and found a, uh, a non-copyrighted song. Uh, this is a Skyrim cover by Jason Yang. And what it is, it's sort of, sort of like a, a violin version. I'll let you listen to it now. So yeah, it's sort of like a violin. And then it gets into a heavier violin. Yeah. So it's a minute 43 in, and it gets into the whole Skyrim. All that sort of thing but um we're not going to be going that far and we're only going to be going about a minute into the cinematic so we'll only get that nice sort of violin introduction which um is sort of suited for the uh the really slow panoramic which we've got here okay so enough blabbing on uh now we're going to get into the uh creation of the cinematic now what i'm using is i'm using adobe after effects cs6 uh, again, as I stated in the previous video, you can buy it, otherwise get it yourself, um, don't care how you get it, um, but yeah, so we've got uh, CS6 and what we're going to do is open it up and we're going to come up and we're going to create a new composition. Now we're going to keep the uh, frame rate at 30 FPS because a lot of people have been said, uh, have said that, you know, 60 FPS is a lot better. YouTube automatically converts the frame rate to 30 fps regardless of what you uploaded in so it's pretty pointless uploading a 60 fps footage wasting um size file sizes i mean look at these file sizes there you know for a 14 second video that's 390 megabytes and this is only in um 720p because i felt like i didn't actually need it because this is more of a proof of concept video but i still want it to look nice obviously so yeah like i mean a 19 second video is 700 megabytes so you know it's it's quite a big um, quite a bit of a file, so we the, the reason we use um, our Adobe After After Effects is because I could just upload this to YouTube, just this footage, and it would take me a shit long time for a 19 second footage. Um, if I was to sort of convert this down, it makes it look better. Adds music, different clips, color correction, lens flare, all of that stuff, um, and we also reduce the file size by a lot. So yeah, so keep it at 30 fps. Um, it depends what sort of you want to produce it in, you'd usually al almost, you know, go every single time go to uh, 720p or 1080p um, because those are the standard YouTube formats. So we're going to go with 1280 by 720 uh, 720p and we get our comp one. Now if you haven't used Adobe After Effects before, don't worry. Um, I, I'm not going to explain to you the basics of Adobe After Effects, but Basically, you create compositions, and it's all based about compositions. It's a lot. It's really, really difficult to learn the ropes of this, but once you get it, it's a breeze. Um, when I first started using Adobe After Effects, I was just like, what the fuck? How do I, how, how do I use this? Um, so anyway, once we have this, uh, we're going to import our footage. So we're just going to drag and drop this on the um, 
on the sort of menu side menu we have here and we're also going to import our song and our intro I always like to start off with my intro in a cinematic okay so uh, just get that to fit so what we're going to do now is we're going to find our sort of first um, first clip that we're going to use I don't like using the uh, in stream footage here because it's a bit laggy so I usually like same with the song um, if I want to find a particular part of the song I usually try to find about like one minute and then go and find it on the timeline here I don't like to scrub through on the on the Adobe After Effects because my computer isn't actually an amazing machine let's put it that way okay anyway so we have our footage here I think I might just start off with a basic one like this we have nice water we have nice uh, sort of swampy effect however there's no waving wheat particles like this actually I'm gonna start off with this um, okay that's a good one okay so we're gonna start off with the first one uh, so 98 so if we drop this into our composition and we drop our intro and we drop the music these are the three things we're gonna be working with in the beginning so as you can see we have our clip here uh, we also have our intro, so this is the, the lines for the intro, if I drop this below here that'll bring up our intro and it's actually, it's bigger, the resolution of the intro is 1920 by 1080 so we're going to drop this down. Um, okay, now we're going to, <clears throat> now the one thing I don't like about Adobe After Effects is that we have to RAM preview anything, so I'm going to turn off the music because this intro has its own custom music and I want the music to stay in key with the, uh, the Skyrim music. And what we're going to do is we're going to double click LL to bring up, bring up our waveform. Now it is essential that you use your waveform. Um, it'll take a while to load this because it has to load a lot of uh, waves. There we go. So once we have that, uh, actually we'll drop down the resolution to half so it only has to uh, render out half the frames, half the uh, pixels. Alright, so we have our waveform here, and if I rent, if I RAM preview this, we can see that, hold on, uh, there we go. So the music doesn't start till about two seconds in, so what we're going to do is we're going to drag this back to the start of the composition, so that it is able to start as soon, maybe a bit forward, we want a little delay. Yeah, that's good. And then we want it to on the downbeat. And so when it goes goes in for the violin, so it's like uh, this bit here, B for begin brackets. Uh, so we want it to come in right there, because that's the beginning of the violin stroke, and we want it the fade in to happen right at the beginning of the violin stroke. So if we bring RAM preview this a bit more, so we want it to come in now and have that nice sort of like that sort of thing <laughs> okay so um, what we will do is we will actually uh, let's see we want it to start let's see where do we want it to start right there sort of start there right okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to drop down the opacity, um, hold shift to get to the end. Uh, we're going to drop down the opacity, keyframe, bring it up about, let's see, that's one second, bring it about one second, and bring it up to 100, and that creates two keyframes, which is sort of like waypointing, so when it starts at zero and it builds its way up over a period of one second to 100%. Now if we ran preview this again, we will see... There we go. Nice smooth sort of transition we got there. I'm not sure about that. What the heck? Okay, I'm gonna hold Alt, end bracket, and that'll sort of chop off the end of where you have your mark. Yeah, that's good. Okay, I like that. So now we have our sort of beginning. So if we ramp you, uh, sorry, ramp preview this whole thing, we have the intro there. Yep. and then we want to sort of fade out into the next clip 
So if we if we come over right at the beginning of this clip and we come to about there, that should be good enough. So it comes at and then fades out and then in. So it's it's sort of it's always on the stroke. So it goes out on the on the out stroke and, and fade in on the uh, in stroke. So if we play that again, we will see where the outstroke is and where the instroke is. I'm sort of just using the strokes for the violin turn, by the way. And then out, and then in. So it's sort of around here. We want it to, or I reckon about there. We want that to end. We'll do that again. I know there's a lot of repeating of the song. <laughs> out and in so yeah we want it to end just at the beginning of the in stroke um, so if we bring these little uh, lips down here I'm not sure what to call them uh, okay, just do that um, so one about there keyframe the opacity again drop it down to the end hold shift to, to sort of jump to the end drop down the opacity and we'll play that again and out and in maybe a bit longer that's good okay so now that we've got our first clip, um, what I'm going to do is we're going to start working on some of the color correction and maybe add in a bit of lens flare. Now, I'm debating whether or not to sort of go with a sky replacement. I might do that in another tutorial. However, um, you know, I'm sort of just a bit weary about doing that because it is quite complicated to, to key out and this is more of a basic cinematic tutorial. Um, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing the color correction and lens flare. Uh, which is what I use. I don't think I don't usually use anything else. Um, okay, so, but before we start on that, what I'm going to do is actually uh, create. You know those little black bars that they have to sort of drop their aspect ratio down. Uh, so we have these little black bars to sort of give it a more widescreen look. Um, we're going to add in some of those now. Most people usually just go like that and drag. Pretend that's black. Just, just make that black. They usually like drag things in like that and it's not even so you n never use this me uh, method because there's a much simpler one well, it's not simpler but there's a much um, easier method to, to go about it now what we do is we create a uh, a null wait no we create sorry we create a shape layer and then we come into effects and presets now this you don't have to have a plugin for this this is all built in um, Set this load a bit. Actually, hold on. I'm going to save my work. Uh, amazing cinematic. There we go. Okay, so always save your work. Lesson I learned the hard way. Okay, so um, what we're going to do is we're going to type in grid. And it's under generate. Grid, drag it onto your shape layer. And we get a nice looking grid here. Now, what we do is we get the anchor, set it to zero. And set it to zero. Now credits to Baker's Toots for um, teaching me how to do this. It's a really good method. Now we change it to width and height sliders. Drag it above sort of the aspect ratio that you've got here. See it. See how it goes up to uh, 1280, and then tw it goes 1280 because it's the sort of final thing. Uh, we want to go further than that, so we type in about 3,000, and the height is 720 is the height. Change the color to black and then boost the border and then drag the anchor point over and that sort of gives us a nice little black uh, some black lines so if we want to create the border even more we can do that but I'm going to leave it at about here that's a good one okay so now that we've got that we want to make sure the shape layers on top otherwise it will not um, here we go it won't it won't be active so you have to drag it above it's all layered so yeah now that we have that we can work on some color correction so the color correction that I'm going to be using is a magic bullet looks now I would strongly recommend you um, go and get magic bullet looks it is amazing uh, so we're going to drag this onto our clip here edit 
and I already have some pre-made color corrections if you would like uh, these color corrections. I'll, I've got a lot of them that I don't necessarily use. Uh, where is it? Under Smixy CC. There you go. So these are all of my preset color corrections here. And um, I'll put a download link for a couple of the ones that I use. I sort of don't really want to give out any of these. But um, as I said, I'll put a download link for some of the ones that I use. Now we've got some really over-edited. These are actually some of the um, Baker's and Nigga Camo's ones. Like, I mean, we're not going to be using that, obviously. That's just intense. Anyway, uh, let's open our one again. And let's choose a nice one. I usually go with uh, 70... Uh, where is it? Like 30... Maybe 34. I think they've all been jumbled up. Yeah, it's over-edited. Um, no, it's too dark. Let's see. There we go. We have a 39. 39 is a nice looking one. It's not. It's it's quite dark. Actually, we'll boost the uh, brightness on this. Boost the contrast. There we go. All right. I'll put a download link for these, and you can download these and use them. So that's our first one, and we're also going to be chucking in some lens flare here. So if I create a solid, now I don't actually. I don't have the. Um, the lens flare by uh, video copilot so we're just going to be using the standard lens flare here uh, but I mean it looks fine it looks perfect enough click add and that is our lens flare there now we want to drag it underneath the shape layer because um, otherwise it'll look like it'll be over the black lines and if we click on that we can move the point here it's not going to be too bright I don't want it actually what about there well, that doesn't look too real. <laughs> oh, well. Alright, so, and as that continues on, we sort of... Actually, no. no we're not going to do lens flare. Screw it. We don't need lens flare. We just need some good-looking cinematics. Okay, so now that we have our first clip, uh, we will random preview this, and I'll show you what it looks like. Yeah, we wouldn't use Twixter for this. Um, we would use Twixter if we we're doing more of an upbeat rhythm music. If it was sort of like a do 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 do, and it sort of like jitters along with Twixter. Um, yeah, that's good. Oh, yeah. So that is the first sort of bit for today. Uh, we're hitting on 18 minutes now for the tutorial, so I'll, I'll slow that down. Um, I mean, that's I mean that's that's really quite a nice sort of cinematic even just there. Um, so we're going to save that, and in the next episode, I guess we're going to be sort of compiling the other uh, other clips, and yeah, we're going to be learning more about Adobe After Effects. But thank you for watching. And uh, I will see you in the next video.